You never give me my lead time. Oops. Six minutes, six seconds for it to actually like start after I push start. So now we're good. All right, so roll call. <sighs> Commissioner Knight. Present. Commissioner Her Herlihy. Present. Commissioner Petty. Present. Commissioner Loring. Commissioner Sievertson. Here. And Commissioner Summers. Okay, thank you. All right, it appears we have a quorum. Um, <clears throat> we move to approval of minutes. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? I'll move the minutes. We have a second? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, we'll vote to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved as submitted. Public hearings. No continued or rescheduled, so we move on to the first of the new public hearings. Is Jacob going to present today? Nice. You're on, sir. Can everybody see the presentation? Yes. All right. Good afternoon, Commission members. It is a pleasure to be presenting before you today. I'm here to present the Jara Mills Act contract application at 904 M Street. 904 M Street is located in the northern portion of the city of Rica, approximately four blocks south of Highway 101, also known as uh, Fifth Street. Moving in closer to the site, uh, the site is located on a corner lot along the northeast corner of M and 9th Streets. The property is currently composed of a 2,800 square foot, two-story main residence shown here with a detached four-car garage with two separate residential units above at the rear facing the alley in 9th Street shown here. The garage with above residential has a separate address known as 1122 9th Street. The main residence was constructed in 1895. The property is listed within the Green Book. However, in 1996, the then owner opted the property off the local register of historic places. The property was later added to the local register by a different owner in 2005. The Green Book describes the main residence as a two-story Queen Anne house with large rounded arch windows in the first floor bay, which can be seen in this image to the right. The rear garage with above residential units was added to the property in 1926. The property owners, Colleen and Jose Hara, recently acquired the property in December of 2021 and intend on conducting extensive repairs and minor alterations to rehabilitate the deteriorated exterior architectural features, such as the shingle siding and asphalt roof, roofs. The owners wish to enter into a Mills Act contract with the City of Rica to offset the costs of the repairs and improvements. At this time, the Historic Preservation Commission is just reviewing the Mills Act contract request. No alterations are currently proposed for the review by Historic Preservation at this time. Prior to the start of any exterior alteration work, the owners will need to return to HPC for any necessary HPC approvals. The Mills Act Property Tax Incentive, the California Government Code 50280, grants the City of Rica the ability to enter into agreements with private property owners or agents for the continued preservation of qualified historical property. To be considered a qualified historic property under the Mills Act, the property must meet the following criteria. The property is located entirely within the City of Rica. The property is privately owned. The property is not exempt from property taxation. The property is individually listed on the City of Rica's local register of historic places. The subject property meets this criteria. As required in the participation of the Mills Act, those property owners have developed and will adhere to a scheduled plan for maintenance and treatment of historic property that is unique to the property and provides a timeline for improvements to be conducted over a 10 year span. In return, the county assessors recalculates the property taxes by assessing the property's potential income to determine the property tax. 
rather than the market value of the property. The property owners have provided a schedule and plan for maintenance and treatment of historic property specific to each of the two structures. As shown here, the owners are proposing a mix of rehabilitation, functional improvements, and limited interior renovations spread over a 10-year period for the main residence, also known as 9 to 4 M Street. For example, the owners intend to replace the rear porch stairs, seen here, and repair the damaged gutter system. Excluding the asphalt roof, the owners have indicated only redwood and firwood materials are anticipated to use for replacement and alterations. The owners have estimated the cost for maintenance and improvements of 904 M Street to be around $68,201. The improvements of the detached garage and residential new units, 1122 9th Street, are limited to the replacement of deteriorated exterior alteration architectural features and a comprehensive interior and update of the existing second floor residential units and associated first floor laundry shown here. Similar to the main residence, the exterior facade and decking will be replaced as necessary with redwood siding and fur materials. The interior will be updated to modern standards for habitation with bathrooms, laundry facilities, and electrical throughout receiving updates. The owners have estimated the cost for maintenance and improvements 1122 9th Street to be around $69,708. Per Eureka Missile Code 157.003B2, the Historic Preservation Commission negotiate Mills Act agreements with applicants. The HPC must determine whether the Mills Act contract is appropriate for the parcel and whether it provides for preservation and rehabilitation compliant with the Secretary of Interior's standards for rehabilitation. If the commission approves the application, the commission's action and recommendation will be forwarded to the city manager and the city manager is authorized by the city council to enter into a mills contract with the property owner. Based on the discussion within the staff report, staff recommends the commission adopt a resolution recommending the city manager enter a Mills Act contract with the property owners of 904 M Street. I'm available for any questions, and I believe uh, Colleen Hara, one of the property owners, is also in the audience physically. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? Not at this point. So we'll open this up to public comment and invite anyone from the audience, especially the property owner, to come up and talk to us about the project if they wish. Or do, we, do any of the commissioners have any questions for the property owners? No. All right. Okay, Bruce, I didn't hear you. Go for it. Uh, that's because my phone isn't doing what I'm asking it to. <laughs> You're on. It's, it's smarter than me. Um, I'm not sure if this is a question for the property owner or for our discussion, uh, but the house is redwood. The shingles are probably cedar. I see they have power washing down as, as one of the techniques of, of cleaning it up. And as probably everybody on the Historic Preservation Commission knows, if you power wash redwood and uh, if you do it, the outcome is almost always negative, um, not good because of the softness of the redwood. So maybe I'm asking the property owner if, if they would consider some other means of prepping it for painting or whatever they're doing with it. Sanding is certainly acceptable. Thank you. And, and I was going to bring that up too. That in my experience, if you use high pressure water, it will etch into the redwood and destroy the, the surface. So would you, would you please come up to the podium if you're going to speak? And just state your name for the record. Sure. Hi, my name is Colleen Hara. Can you hear me? Do I need to speak into this? Yes. Uh, if it's Hi, turned on. Hi, my name is Colleen Hara. And I was concerned about that, too, about the high pressure. It The paint is is chipping so, uh, fun, you know, just so readily on its own. With I don't even, I think we just need a, um, you know, a scraper 
I don't even think we need a high pressure hose. So thank you for that. I was concerned about that as well. Um, I usually manage, micromanage all projects. So I will be there making sure they're careful. And yeah, that's pretty much And I have what one I question for you, if you don't mind, while you're up here. Please. So under uh, the main residence, under beadboard skirting, mm-hmm. removing all damage, skirting, replacing with one by six, and that, that's to match what's there, right? So. There's a combination of okay. redwood. So what are we matching? So. Well, there there's beadboard. Uh-huh. And I spoke with Eric at Blue Ox, mm-hmm. and he said he could supply that. So I was going to choose that as my first choice. Uh, so we're, your your question is, are we matching the existing uh, th- one inch thick by by I'm not sure how wide the individual panels are mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. the are you talking about the skirting the is skirting that your question? Only the skirting yes. yeah. yeah 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 so you are matching what's there in yes most of, okay and most. we haven't um, we already sp- I already spoke with Eric about it and he seems very confident then he can supply that. Oh, I'm I'm very confident he can too. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know if it'll be old growth, but we'll see what he comes up with. I yeah, so we'll visit that when we get there. Any other questions for the applicant while she is up here and ready mm-hmm. for answering our questions? Yes. All right. Seeing no one come forward, thank oh, you for. Okay. <laughs> I guess we. Yeah, I could talk all day about this house. So. Well, it's a wonderful house, but you've done a very thorough presentation too. So you and Jacob. So thank I you. think most of our questions are probably in the report. So the answers okay. to our questions. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Seeing no one else come forward from the audience or on the online audience, I'll close the public comment period and ask commissioners what their pleasure is with the application as it was submitted. Go for it, Mr. Severson. Um, It sounds like the applicant is certainly cognizant of of how to go about this project, and and I certainly have no problem with the project. And so I'll make a motion to approve the application as presented by the planning department moving that the Historic Preservation Commission adopt the resolution to recommend the city manager enter into a Mills Act contract for the property at 904 M Street. Thank you. Go ahead. And and as a further comment, nothing to do with the motion, but it's only a couple of blocks from my house, so I'm anxious to see some work start on it. (laughs) Do we have a second for the motion? I'll second. Any further discussion or questions for staff or the applicant before we proceed to vote? I, I would just like to say that in the past, this uh, previous owner of this building had a uh, a blog associated with the repairs they've done on the house. She and knows it all about it. Yeah. Was a very exciting thing to see as a young historic preservationist myself at the time uh, to see what other people were doing and how they were uh, sharing the news. I think it was uh, motivational for a lot of us in the community. So I'm excited to see the house continue to thrive that way. That I, I have to say that the blog was really a tipping point for my consideration on purchasing the property because I felt confident with all the work that he done he had done. Um, he probably did a little more than um, like on the windows. I kind of wish he would have referred to Eric because we could have had the little spacers and not have the windows rattle, but. You know, other than I know he was a real do-it-yourselfer, and um, and he had a lot of integrity. And uh, yeah, we feel it's it's really neat to to be able to look back and see what was done, and and feel like I had a relationship with this <laughs> with this house and with him, even though I I never met him. So yeah, think that is it's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Any other comments, questions, or discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of the motion as put forth. Aye. 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 It appears that the motion passed unanimously. Would you please tell the applicant what this means? The Historic Preservation Commission has recommended the city manager approve the contract for the Mills Act. Um, We will work with you to go through that process. 
there is a 10 day appeal period of the commission's recommendation. So uh, provided no appeal is filed, then um, we'll move forward. All righty, thank you. Thank you for bringing this forth. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, moving on to the second item on our agenda here, uh, the uh, Carson Park project. Who is presenting in this case? That would be Jacob also. Okay, Jacob, you're on. Apologies, moving it, moving on to the screen now. <laughs> Can everybody see the presentation? Yes. All right. It is a pleasure to be presenting before the commission members again today. I'm here to present the Carson Park uh, ADA restroom edition. As indicated here, the site is located in the central portion of Eureka, approximately two blocks south of Eureka High School, which is boxed in yellow here. Carson Park is bounded by Carson and Boone Street to the north and south, with H and I streets along the west and east of the property. The proposed ADA restroom and the existing historical structures such as the Park Carson Park Lodge and the Pergola, are specifically located in the southwest segment of the, of the property outlined in blue. The Carson Park Lodge and Pergola were constructed near the establishment of Carson Park around 1932, when the William Carson estate donated the property to the city of Eureka following the, William Car- the, the notable William Carson's passing. The construction of the lodge and Pergola were part of, it, of Depression Era work programs and were designed by local architect Frank Georgeson and constructed by A.C. Johnson, a local contractor. The Green Book description of uh, of the Carson Park property is limited to the Carson Park Lodge, which is also known as 2005 I Street, which describes the structure as being a one-story colonial revival public building. The Eureka Heritage Society's architectural survey dated around the 1970s notes the lodge and pergola as a handsome example of period revival design and unusually thoughtful for building of this use. The lodge and pergola have been the only facility for restrooms and storage of the park and a focal point for picnicking. Similar to the original establishment of Carson Park, a community endeavor and fundraising has been undertaken to improve Carson Park to better meet the needs of the surrounding community. In conjunction with providing updated recreation facilities, the City of Eureka Community Services is addressing ADA access at Carson Park through the addition of a 357 square foot restroom located northwest of the Carson, located northeast of the Carson Park Lodge, indicated in red. The remainder of the park, or this northwest, sorry. The remainder of the park improvements are generally flat work with the re- relocation of the baseball park, uh, baseball court, basketball court, new pickleball courts, and the dog run areas uh, being relocated. The Carson Park Lodge and Pergola will be retained and repainted with long-term plans for restoring the structure. Regarding the ADA restroom, the exterior will have horizontal side plank, uh, hardy plank siding, which is composed of fiber cement, with triangle shaped metal screens under the roof line for ventilation, which are circled in green here. The siding will be painted to match the lodge and the low pitched 512 roof will be composed of composition shingles. Along the Eastern side of the building, separate men's and women's restroom entrances will be visible with two attached metal guardrails highlighted in purple extending out. The West and South sides of the new structure will be visible from the public way along H and Carson streets with the Carson Park Lodge only partially screening it from view along the Carson street. Eureka Municipal Code section 157.006C requires a proposed alteration to be reviewed in light of its effects on the existing historical character of the affected structure as it relates to the streetscape. In addition, the analysis was based upon the Secretary of, Secretary of Interior's standards for treatment of historic care, uh, properties, specifically the standards for rehabilitation. 
based on the findings and analysis demonstrated within the staff report, staff believes the proposed alteration meets the standards for rehabilitation. Staff has provided the following suggested motion for the project. I'm available for any questions, and so is the community services team. Thank you for your presentation. <clears throat> Commissioners, do you have any questions for the team or comments before we yeah. go into public comment? I'm, I'm a little confused. Maybe I missed a part here. You're using the word rehabilitation of the park, right? Uh, but it's the structure in question, the 1932 structure. Are we talking about rehabilitating that structure as well? Not in this application. It says specifically that any repair of significantly damaged sections would likely occur in the future but are not proposed at this time. So the only, the only thing that's proposed at this point in time is painting of the structure. Okay, so I guess the, the word rehabilitation is confusing in this situation. I think we looked at it as rehabilitation of the entire park facility as opposed to rehabilitation of the only structure. Mm -hmm. Any further questions for staff before we proceed to public comment? Bruce, go ahead. Yeah, um, Jacob, you said party plank siding. Is it a lip, lip, lap siding? I poured six yards of concrete this morning. I'm tired. Is it? It's a horizontal ship uh, lap siding. Is it? I'm not clear. I would refer to the community services team regarding that. Yes, it'll be a horizontal lap siding, ship lap siding. Okay. And thank you. Thank you, Bruce. I have a question for the team. Um, was there any thought of putting the 88 bathrooms in the existing building instead of building a new building during this whole process? And why was that abandoned if that was considered at all? I believe that the answer to that is yes, there was some discussion of it. There um, was also discussion actually of demolition of the existing building. I remember building that. And, That's what brought this all to our attention. Exactly. Yes, yes. So um, I believe that there are potential issues with um, doing the ADA upgrades to the structure under the timeline that they're working on now. So that's not to say that ADA upgrades would not happen for the lodge building in the future. Obviously that would come back to you if there was exterior changes to it. Um, but I think at this point in time, in order for them to um, move forward, the proposal was to do the additional, so my concern ADA, with the small that, ADA structure. Well, my concern with that is then what use does this building have and will it become neglected because it doesn't really have a purpose. What will the purpose be for this existing building in the future? What uses will it be put to, especially the bathroom area? And so I believe that there, and they can, the community services team can help me answer this question too, <laughs> but um, I think that they're looking uh, again at the future for snack bars, um, you know, maybe a meeting room or something like that, so. Is there any commitment in this proposal to working on this building or just a note that it'll be worked on in the future? So the community services team is actually going to be doing some research on the, the lodge building itself and the pergola. And so they're going to use that information to put together a plan moving forward with the building. Because it does seem a little confusing to me why this is even brought to us if we're not going to be talking about the building that concerns the Preservation Commission. So, I mean, we are all for the park rehabilitation. That's great. But our commission is more about the preservation of existing structures on the local register. So. As well as alteration of existing property right. on the local register. And so right. since we're adding a whole new building to the site, right. that's I, why it's coming to you. I, I, I get that. But okay. it, it just seems like we should be talking about improvements to the Carson Lodge at the same time. Because we were talking about demolition. and Yeah. So <clears throat> because they had kind of started to go down a road of demolition and had to pivot, that's why we're going down this road now with building the structure and coming back in the future with rehabil rehabilitation of the existing structure at some point. Right, and I know the commission probably doesn't have any power to make any stipulations, but I would like to see that included in this proposal so it doesn't get left by the wayside when other things become more important and it's just founders and doesn't happen. So not any... Uh, slight at the team. It's just that this is the way things go. So, yeah. so. any comments? 
before we go to public comment? Uh, yeah, it is. It is concerning that this was first brought to our attention because you know, there was talk of demolishing a historic building without any review on our part, um, and now the uh, that issue is just kind of stepped aside, and and there's no commitment visibly made here to making improvements to a structure that does need improvements to be maintained over the time. Thank you. All right, hearing no more comments, I'd like to open this to public comment and invite anyone from the audience who wishes to address this subject, come forth. I, I get it with what's going on, the agenda is for the new restroom. And you, you know, of course, I'm concerned with the um, preservation of, of the um, historic Carson Park Lodge and the pergola and the whole um, uh, historic streetscape of Carson Park. And oh, before I get going, not to get, you know, um, you know, overly seemingly petty about it, but although the land was donated in 1932, the construction of the lodge occurred between 1935 and 39. And it, and it happened in spurts over those years because of the depression programs that assisted with it. And, and it was um, Adrian Johnson at the end, I believe, that finally got it finished off. But it had been different work crews, you know, uh, uh, Eurekans hired because of the, the depression in bits and pieces, you know, from 35 to 39 was the construction of the building, which I outlined when I was here last time, and I left, you know, an information packet about all of that. But, you know, once something is cast into print, it seems to have a life of its own, irregardless. Well, anyway, to get back to the topic today, I can understand a separate agenda item for the uh, restroom, to have a new restroom, and it came about because of uh, the change from de demolishing, right, so on. Um, so I can understand that, and I'm curious about what the uh, what it would look like, and that's the major reason I'm here. Uh, you know, I, I figure in the future there will be on the agenda about the other aspects of preservation of the pergola and the lodge building and so on. You know, I don't expect that that's going to go by the wayside because that that area of the park needs needs to be preserved and on your agenda. But for the restroom, you know, the real challenge is how do you introduce something new into a historic landscape? And that southwest corner of the park is a historic landscape. Um, so that's the real challenge, and a lot of it's kind of subjective, like what does a design look like and what are the materials that you use? But a lot of it comes down to, you know, quality construction and and, uh, and, and modern's okay. Modern's better than trying to do a, a fake uh, period revival style. You know, like there's always been new things introduced into Eureka, into historic environments, but how do you do it while respecting the the existing uh, Carson Park Lodge building and the pergola. And your uh, interest is appropriate because uh, that needs to be in the forefront going forward of everything that happens here in respecting the Carson Park Lodge building and the pergola and the existing historic uh, park environment. So, oh, I still have a little bit more time. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I could say a lot, but I can understand the focus, the agenda item is the restroom. I can understand that, but uh, it, I don't think it means to slight, you know, the rest of it. Um, that's going to need to be in the forefront of all the design and planning going forward. Thank okay, you thank your, you. Thank you. Does anyone else from the audience wish to come and address this topic? Good afternoon, Marianne McCulloch with the Eureka Heritage Society. Um, I too have just con concerns about um, the main the maintenance of the building, uh, uh, the, the lodge and the pergola, uh, only because we all know how difficult it is to get funding for projects unless you go for grant funding, and, and probably that's how this whole playground is happening, or park is, improvement is happening in the first place. So I want to make sure that, you know, in this whole process, that lodge and pergola is not forgotten so we don't have a demolition by neglect um, situation. 
And I'm not saying that the city would do that on purpose. It's just an artifact, if you will, of the way funding is these days. Uh, my other thought is about the removal of some of the mature rhododendrons. Um, I know that from experience that they can easily be replanted. And I would suggest since some of these are very mature and have been there in the park since I can remember, um, which sometimes is yesterday and sometimes is a lot longer, um, but it, it is one of those things that we, they might want to look into transplanting them rather than totally uh, uprooting them and getting rid of them because it's possible they could be transplanted. Um, as for the new design, I appreciate the fact that they're looking at some sort of a lap siding rather than uh, Hammond Park. So it's nicer uh, looking and, and attractive. I know the, the residents in the area were concerned about that. Um, but I think that, you know, again, my biggest concern is just the health and welfare of the lodge and the pergola in the long term. So. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Does anyone else from the audience or online wish to address this during public comment? All right, seeing no one come forward, we close public comment period and ask the commissioners for their thoughts before we proceed to vote on a maybe a motion that was proposed by staff. Any more comments? Any more? Anyone willing to take up the motion as suggested? I'll do that. All right. So I'll move that Historic Preservation Commission approve the adopt the resolution to conditionally approve the addition of an ADA restroom at Carson Park, APN 011 032-001. Well, let's get a second to this, and then we can talk about it, so, if we're going to have a second. Is anyone willing to second this? We're right in the middle of a motion. We really shouldn't have discussion until we either drop the motion or get a second to it. So. I'll second. All right. Robin, did you have a comment? I did. I wanted to provide a comment uh, from the staff team, but I didn't know where it was appropriate, so I didn't want to interrupt. Please. Wonderful, thank you. I'm Robin Prosker with the Community Services Department here with my colleagues Donna and Jeff. Um, so just wanted to share um, a little bit on our side to help give some assurances. Um, we oversee all 14 of Eureka's parks and Carson Park is very, very unique in that of course it serves the neighborhood's recreational needs and also is historic and has a valuable uh, structure within it. And that is um, kind of a new landscape for I think the city to navigate together. Um, you know, some could potentially argue that prior to our department's era that the whole park has been forgotten like many of our parks. Um, this specific department has done a lot to improve the park the best we can. Uh, Hammond Park, Clara Mayberry, Sequoia Park phase one, or under uh, design of 2030 park for a grant we were awarded. And it's just a big priority of ours to get our parks up to par with where they should be for our community, including ADA access. Um, we have a high percentage of disabled people in our community and there's not enough access for them, even outside of our parks and public spaces. Um, so I wanted to highlight that. And unfortunately, Carson Park, a lot of the park grants we go after um, they're not eligible. It's really big on the demographics of the neighborhood. And unfortunately, every grant we've come across, Carson Park has been ineligible. So we're in a very special situation that we've been able to fundraise and find alternative funding methods to get this park improved. And by no means do we intend to forget the building. You could really see it as we've really just discovered the value of the building or on the precipice of making plans for it. Um, we are, um, I hope that that comes through in the fact that we're contracting Ray Hillman to do our historic report on the entire park. Um, we also hope to turn that into interpretive signs um, to share the history of the park and the building. And we absolutely intend to fix up the building in the future. Um, unfortunately, it just doesn't fall in the timeline as of today. Um, but we are very dedicated to Eureka's Parks and Open Spaces. Um, we feel really fortunate to have this group of people assisting us and would absolutely love to even come back to talk about how we could embark on a partnership to improve the lodge. Um, we're all for that. So I just 
I hope that gives you a little bit more trust in our team and what we're doing. It, and we'd be happy to answer questions. It gives me a lot more trust, and I really appreciate your, your coming forth with that because I have seen this building be sorely neglected for my whole life. It's just kind of sitting there rotting for the last 40 years. But I have noticed the park being improved in the last few years. So I'm much more assured that something will happen in the future now So, with this team. So. Um, yeah, I'd like to mention that I think we may already have a good start, if not a complete historic report uh, already created by Bob Liebershaw in part of the record here today. Um, and that if you need to spend money on another report, you might hire a contractor to do an evaluation of the structure. Uh, and to come up with recommendations for its repair and enter that into your application. I think that would be a great uh, statement about understanding what's uh, at stake there in the building and, and what steps need to be taken to repair it in the future, even if you can't afford it right now. All right. Any more discussion before we proceed to vote? I, Commissioner Severson. Bruce? I, I wanted to ask Robin a question about the, the pickleball courts and, and uh, because you have that facility at the Adorney Center and I think there's eight courts proposed or six courts proposed, something like that. Is that what it is, Robin? Do you recall right off? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering about the adequate, adequateness. The, are there going to be enough restrooms for all those courts? That's my question. Yeah. That's a great question, Bruce. Um, so it is true that uh, there is pickleball at the Adorney Center, but what's unique about pickleball is that it has its own uh, lines and courts, and there's no exclusive pickleball court provided by the city in Eureka. Um, so what we're proposing here are regulation pickleball courts, um, and that's very important for tournaments. Um, we've been hearing uh, from the pickleball community every time we do park input that they want pickleball courts somewhere. Um, and we finally found a location where, where it, there's an opportunity. Um, whether there's enough restrooms um, for, say, a tournament, uh, you know, that's hard to say. It's very typical for large events, whether we're at Halveston Park or Sequoia Park. Usually porta potties are brought in for large scale events. And that's something that we can regulate through our event permit process. Um, we can have some different metrics that might determine you might need to get extra service from our college. You're going to have too much waste or you're going to have high attendance and we don't want to overload the plumbing. So those are certainly things we vet when we give out special event permits. Okay. So then the logical transition to this is maybe the lodge should have in the planning stage uh, additional restrooms available or something like that. I, I do notice the ble did notice the bleachers on the plans for the pickleball court. I know nobody comes and watches me play pickleball, but um, like you said, there's tournaments and, and that, and it, it is the fastest growing sport that there is. There's no doubt about it. So I'm just putting that out there. If you talk to Donna about it or something as you're planning ahead that, that maybe there's a need for additional ones. Absolutely, I agree with that. And are the yeah, existing restrooms <laughs> are the existing restrooms in the Carson Park Lodge usable if we have additional ADA bathrooms? As they as they are. I would defer to Jeff about their current status. They're pretty rough, actually. Um, we've been able to use them on very very limited occasions, um, but uh, it's a liability for the city. In their current state and they definitely would need some upgrades the fixtures are probably from the 40s uh, the door the doorways are 24 inches you know nowhere near any ada and even for like someone my size to just get in there it's very cramped um there could be some uh consolidation so there's like in the men's side there's a urinal and a, and a toilet there could be like a consolidation of those so that we could create some space. One of the issues, we've looked at rehabilitate, rehabilitating the, the restroom and lodge um, with the rotary, um, just some ideas. They've had some of their um, uh, group volunteer, their services who, who work in that field. And we've also talked with like a CR and looked at like um, having a class um, come in there and do some uh, remodeling and such. 
um, as an educational tool also. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the elevation of the, of the facility is an issue. So getting grading, slope grading up to those restrooms on, that are on both ends of it um, is an issue. Um, we currently use it for storage and we have in the past run programming out of that facility. We've had summer camps and such. Um, over time, it's just the usage has changed quite a bit with our programming, but they are in pretty bad, they're in pretty bad shape. All right, thank you for that. Um, I see here in this uh, uh, set of drawings created by HDS that uh, there are some cedars to be removed, especially 48 inch, some 36 inch cedars along the H Street side as well. I only see one or two rhododendrons to be removed in here. Um, do you know, uh, Marianne, does this reflect the ones you were concerned about? Okay. Sure. They're on the H Street side, yeah. 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 And are they on the one on the H Street yes. side? Yes. Yeah, which yeah. are very well established, to my knowledge. Most of the rhododendrons in Carson Park have been probably there my entire life. Uh -huh. So if not since I was quite young. So they are definitely, if you want to call a heritage plant, they are definitely a heritage plant. Yeah. The, so yeah. I would suggest try it, you know, rather than remove them, if they have to be removed, trying to replant them just to see if they can be relocated. Right. I, we've done some fairly mature ones out on our property, and they've made it. So. Okay. And, it, I mean... The rhododendron parade does go right by there. Yeah, it does. I know it's kind of it's kind of tough because I know a lot of people that take the rhododendrons off of those plants for their floats. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I think I remember a high school student doing that one time. Anyway, <laughs> right. Uh, so it, as, as far as I can see in these plans, there's only maybe two rhododendrons slated for removal. If we could get that updated to attempted relocation. That would be great. I don't think anybody's going to relocate a 48 inch cedar, though. No, no. I'm afraid not. Are you done? With yeah. Me? Thank, Thank you, you Marianne. All right. Any more comments before we proceed to vote? If none, uh, please uh, state your intentions on the motion as presented and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Did I hear Bruce? I didn't hear you. You absolutely do not hear me. Yes, I, I, I. Thank you. It appears the motion has passed three to one. So there we go. Moving forward. No. We have to have a majority of the quorum. When did that take place? I've never been in any group that's ever had that requirement before. Why does the city do that? <laughs> so it just fails. Then. So. Okay. Right, 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 right. So, is there any thought of an amended to make an amended motion? Okay. That um, should we be able to get um, uh, a historic document about this park entered into this record, this application, perhaps the one that has already been submitted to us? That'd be great. Um, uh, and then if we can have a contractor use the funds you were going to set aside to do the historic, uh, review, maybe do a review of the existing structure. I think that would, um, move us in the right direction. Um, and if we, if there's a, somebody in the, the parks department that can deal with the evaluating, relocating rhododendrons, that would make a tremendous uh, change for one of our commenters here and would uh, be in the spirit of the rhododendron parade so uh, with um, the alteration of this application to include Bob Le Lebershaw's historic review of the structure and the park with the uh, attempt to relocate the existing rhododendrons and uh, a, car a contractor's evaluation of the existing structure I would move to accept that application. So, Mr. Chairman, that was not what was on the agenda for today. It's not what is in the application. So it. I know, but we are amending the motion it, to include. You say we're reviewing the whole. 
well, site, which if we're talking about plantings. And the, ap- the application is for the restroom facility, not for the existing structure. Then why are we talking about anything else? Well, that's what I'm <laughs> trying to say. <laughs> I, I certainly We're understand. here because the demolition was uh, imminent of the 1932 to 1939 Carson Park lot. Right, and that's not happening. No. So. But if we have oversight over the addition of ADA bathrooms or the ability to comment on them, we have ability to comment on the removal of the rhododendrons and the uh, conditions of the existing structure. The existing structure is not in the current application. It's not being it's not being considered today. Well, it's actually it's, mentioned in the existing application. So. I, I understand that. It's not <laughs> part of what is being proposed for the change. I, I I certainly understand Commissioner Herlihy's desire to include that. I think that community services staff and planning staff have certainly heard that. Um, you know, we we're planning on bringing that back to you at some point in the future. I think we could probably stretch it to add in the rhododendron relocation relocation thank yeah. you mm-hmm. um my concern is that the public hearing notice did not talk about doing any reports or any other additional um, study or well, I know, response the, for the existing structure and that's where my concern lies but the staff has made it clear that they've already hired someone to do that so it's already in the works so i don't understand why we can't include that just because it wasn't noticed or Okay. I see your point. <laughs> okay. Do we have a an amended amended motion? Are we willing well, to go there? Let me ask Kristen a question here. What if we put as a condition, an additional condition, if we approve the restroom, that the city bring forth a new um, complete package? within 90 days or something like that? Is that within you, our purview there, Kristen, you think? or If community services team can agree to either 90 days or some other timeline that they can support, I think that you could do that because you're not... <sighs> You're asking for somebody to come back that can get a public hearing notice in right. the future and be right. on the agenda for consideration. Right. right. I think that could potentially be mm-hmm. a, uh, acceptable. What say you, team? Um, hello, everyone. <laughs> My name's Donna. I'm the director of community services, and I think we are absolutely on board with everything you are all proposing. Um, nervous about the timeline we are juggling a lot of park projects right now and i don't want to rush any kind of planning phase for this special aspect of carson park so if we i'm a little more sensitive to the timing um but we could we could come back with an an update on where we're at we could get the ball rolling um start doing some legwork and just sort of have even more of an ongoing update and connection with you guys and um and enjoy that oversight um and input from your team um so i think the only thing i'd be a little hesitant is to um is the timing we have a gazillion projects going on rob and jeff what do you guys think yeah i guess i wasn't sure what an updated package meant on bruce's end so i might need some clarification but yeah, relocating the rhododendron sounds great. You know, we do want to evaluate the building and get long-term plans. Yep. Um, whether we do still procure our own historic report or not, I feel like it's totally separate from that. We would love to do both. Um, so like Donna said, I think this all, we're on the same page. Well, Robin or Donna, um, if we said 120 days or six months, a conceptual, a complete mm-hmm. conceptual package that incorporates what the the HPC would like to see something like that doable um I believe so it will be a budgetary issue to be able to go as far as putting together a conceptual um but we can start the process I think we could come back to you much sooner than that and continue to seek guidance 
um, and set a goal of six months of having a solid plan that then we're able to pursue a funding strategy for. I mean, it's our intent. This park is, um, we're only really in phase one right now. Our intent is to upgrade the playground and to take a historic preservation approach to the building. Um, that's absolutely our intent. And um, we are um, yeah, down to make that happen. So um, six months, I think our team can pull something together. I don't know. <clears throat> This is a, being a little bit put on the spot to commit to, you know, a grand plan solidified and funded, um, but we can start working on it and come back and report. Um, absolutely. That is, we're already planning to do that um, in some form or fashion. We just haven't, we're, we just haven't uh, identified a timeline yet. All right. Can we put that in some form of motion that would be acceptable? And I can um, give you updates as we go along too. Sir. Okay. So is anyone willing to make a motion that would incorporate that? I know. Did I, did it I say that, something? It hasn't been seconded. Commissioner so. it's, 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 Anyone want to second the motion that's been put forth? Well, I was told we can't even have that motion, so that's why I disregarded it, because it was not allowed. The maker of the motion would be encouraged to either revise the motion or withdraw it. I'd be happy to withdraw. Okay. So now we've satisfied that requirement. So do we have a motion, or can we craft a motion that will incorporate what we've just talked about? Okay, I'll attempt one. So I would like to move that we approve the application as submitted with the following conditions, that the every consideration will be taken to move the mature rhododendrons to a new site and not just cut them down and send them to Greenway. That we will get a revised, or not a revised, but a plan from the community services director and their team within 120 days of what their future plans, not a hard and fast budgeted plan, but a, a, a conceptual plan of what is going to happen with the historic structures on this property. I would second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Were we going to, going to include a walkthrough for the lodge? Before anything's done, I think that's, yeah, we can require that, yeah. So. Chuck, you said 120 days, but I think we Donna want, agreed well, to. 180 say, days? I, I mean, I, to be fair. Okay, okay. Let's go with 180 days then, so. If the second is favorable with that, okay. And the walkthrough of the, the property at that time so we can see, based on the existing conditions, where we would go with the conception. All right. Okay. We could do a special meeting in the field. Okay. Yep. Okay. Properly noticed and all. So. Absolutely. Okay, all in favor of the new motion as presented? Aye. 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 Okay. Current motion passed unanimously. Thank you all for your time and attention to this difficult project. Difficult for us because we came to this from a point of demolition, so it was traumatic for us. All right, moving on. We have no more applications that I know of. So any old business? I think we have one item under historic pride and preservation. I couldn't think of what else to call it, so that's what I came up with. Well, that's fine. Uh, I think Ted called it Housing Conservation and Neighborhood Pride Initiative, so it's kind of the same lines. So. I thought mine was more fun, but we can change it to whatever you it. want. Go for it. Um, so I didn't really have anything for you today. Um, Commissioner Loring, or excuse me, Chair Loring did actually provide me with a list that I will be putting together and getting out to the commissioners um, in the hopes that you can either add to the list or provide um, contact information for those that you can share contact information with, um, and then we will move forward. I from there, the, and this will be on your agenda um, every month until further notice. I noticed from the minutes of the last meeting that that was the plan, yes. Thank you. Any other business, old or new? I, I have one more comment on that. Yes, sir. Um, when we discussed this two last meeting, at the last meeting, was it? Yes, yes. Probably. I said I would check with the police department about neighborhood uh, neighborhoods if they had some kind of a, a mapping um, or a map. And I talked to a, a couple of the police 
individuals down there and, and they use the neighborhood watch district map. It's not spe specifically for neighborhoods that are listed um, in the escrow papers or something like that, but that's just a, a one more thing that can be brought into it. They sent me the map and it has all the neighborhoods that they use. I don't know if that works for what we're looking at or not, but it's just a, another tool. Well, make sure you bring that up next meeting when we talk further about this topic. Then. Okay, nope. All right. Any other director's reports or communications? Other yeah. reports? Nothing? I have nothing else for you. All right. So at this time, we'll open up to public comment period to hear comments from the public on items that were not on our agenda that but do concern our commission. So. Mary Ann McCulloch with the Heritage Society. Actually, the other um, neighborhoods that I like to discuss are what is on the map over there. Those are our old neighborhoods, and we can't forget them in our process because they really have a lot of our history in the neighborhoods. So I'm not to say we can't you know, have other districts within neighborhoods, but we need to remember that that's what our neighborhoods used to be. So... Um, I wanted to address the commission again about, or not again, but about uh, a process that the that city staff has implemented that is causing a lot of confusion with um, us, the historical society, and uh, contractors, property owners, and it is having to do with, um, I, I don't know, and, and Kristen, or through the chair, please correct me if I'm wrong, the um, kind of a mini sequa kind of a, a thing with any property that is listed on the look on the green in the green book and the confusion that just has to be is who is qualified to state whether something is historic or not and the, uh, there's evidently a list of people but the historical society was on that list and they're like yeah no we don't do that call the heritage society and we don't do that you know, that's not what we're about at this moment in time anyway. Um, so I was hoping to get some clarification on that. So when people call us, and I, I can certainly speak with Kristen separately too, if that's your brothers, but I don't know if you had any insight into Since this. Since this has come up a couple times before the last meeting and then again between these last meetings, this meeting yeah, and this last meeting, a, what is the process times. for referrals to outside agencies for properties listed in the green book because we seem to be getting that question from the public on various projects that they've been referred by the city so yeah so uh we've had this discussion recently with staff mm -hmm. to clarify that the only time that we should be referring anybody to the heritage society is when our computer system tells us that it's a former caltrans home mm -hmm. Because they hold the CCNRs on those. But we're getting referrals for properties just listed in the green book that are not listed on the local registry. And staff has been told, don't do that anymore. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I mean, it doesn't stop them from talking to us first and then talking to you guys. Sorry, to the Heritage Society. <laughs> no, it's fine. But we just we get confused property owners and we're confused. Well, so, yeah. and it we, isn't we have our, our resource list that we provide. Um, it's on our website. Um, I think the Heritage Society is on there, so they may be picking it up in part from that. But is it on the Eureka history? If I may talk to Kristen yes. through the chair, please through the chair, is it so we can all hear on the Eureka history site that that I, website. I don't think it's on that website. It's on the city's website. Okay, uh, on our uh, development services library page I'll, under I'll take the historic a section. Okay, um, so. It, I, I, I'm trying to get those tightened up. Yeah. <laughs> taken care and of. And it isn't so much that. I think that my, my concern, and it kind of came up even earlier in discussion, is what's the difference between a historian and a historic preservationist or a historic architect? And there's a big difference. And we want to make sure that people are directed to the right people, not necessarily somebody who's just a historian, but somebody who can research the whole thing, know about the history, but also talk about the relative strength well, or weakness uh, of the building. At the, and as I it think is. we want to make sure staff is telling the public when they make these referrals that we're just there for advice. We have no authority over any decisions made about the city. Right. And, and, you know, our purpose at the society, and hopefully it's helpful to the city, is 
troubleshoot some of that so they don't have to take it all that people can come to the Heritage Society, which they do call us often mm -hmm. to talk about, um, thank you, to talk about, um, you know, what can they do? Mills Act, uh, you know, what is the State Historic Building Code? And we try to, to, to take some of that off of the cities. So as long as we're all on the same page, I think that that'll help us both. So. Are you trying to show us there? What? I am. Okay, good. See if I can make it do it. I saw it for a minute. There we go. Uh, so this is the um, historic preservation resource list. Like I said, it's this is from our um, website, and we can certainly send it out to anybody. Um, folks that are on here are uh, voluntary, and we try to update it uh, every once in a while. Um, with checking with folks to see if they still want to be on there or if somebody refers somebody new, we can add them. So we do have research and consultant listing here. Um, so Kristen, if I may, the person I talked to this earlier this week was talking about a lot of the people on that list either are no longer in business. And I see where John Ash, he's no longer really in business. Um, or they're not answering their phones, their phones are disconnected. So yeah, I think some legwork, and if um, I can be of help to you to determine if these are even still viable. But the Historical Society, I don't think that they are feel confident doing that. I don't want to speak for them, but not I don't think all. they no, feel confident yeah. doing that. So, um, I mean, if I can just call out just even who's still around, if I can help you, let me know. Yeah, if you wanted to take this list and just make some notes and let me know that. I, I, I can do that. I really forget. We don't normally, we check their, uh, the email links to them, but we don't often check the phone numbers, so. Yeah, uh, I can do that and see, like I said, John Ash has not been in business for a while, so. Well, very good. I think that's a good thing you two can work on. Yeah, happy get to help. I just was it, and just trying to get clarification, and then I know that it kind of reflects on you because it seems like they want to, if they have to go through the HPC, that also is something that we want to be able to tell them Correct. good information about. So, Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment to come before us today? Seeing no one come forward, we will adjourn our meeting to our next regularly scheduled meeting on July 6th in these chambers at 4 p.m. Thank you all for your time and attendance. And dealing with difficult subjects. Sorry. Wrench in the gear.